What's up, Kizzy community? Well, I'm Force Man. Back in another video. Today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the B&M inverts. Because why not? But anyways, let's get started. Number 20 is a Nemesis Inferno. And this ride just doesn't look very intense. And it's just short duration-wise in general. So that's why it's going to be dead last. Number 19 is Osiris. And this is newer, so it's just not going to be naturally as intense or have as much whip but it does look like it has some elements it does look a bit longer too so that's why it's going to be ahead of nemesis inferno number 18 is dragon challenge and i've ridden this and i don't think it was really that good uh, the dueling was probably very good but after that after the doing was removed, it, the layout was, itself was just very bland, so this ride wasn't very good. It had a very long duration, but the ride itself wasn't very good. The Chinese fireball side was a bit better, but obviously uh, still not as good as the other 17 rides on this list. Number 17 is Blue Harvest, which isn't blue, so uh, you gotta go fix that, Gronalund. But yeah, anyways, this coaster's coming to Gronalund in 2021, so it hasn't opened yet. Which obviously makes it new. But it does look compact so it might be more intense. And it also has some nice whippy moments. Like uh, zero G rolls, corkscrews, heartland rolls, and land twists. Whatever you uh, call these. So Groenland itself is a really small park. So they had to like cram this in here. So it might be a bit more intense. But I just don't know with the track record of the new B&M uh, inverts. So that's what I'm going to have it at the 17 spot. Number 16 is Silver Bullet. And this is a... Uh, larger being an invert in height, but uh, it just doesn't just it just doesn't look intense in the first half. And the second half is kind of good with uh, the helix and the corkscrews, but it's really uh, not as intense as it should be or the other rides on this list. So that's why it's going to be at the number sixteen spot. Number fifteen is Patriot, and this is very similar to Silver Bullet. I feel like, but just the beginning looks a bit more intense, and that's why I put it ahead of Silver Bullet for now. And it's also themed to the worst team in the NFL, so that's why. I'm just joking, that's not why, but that sucks. But anyways, this ride is just okay, so that's why it's going to be number 15. Number 14 is Great Bear, and I've ridden this as well. This is also very underrated in my opinion. It's not as bad as people say. The first half does have the intensity for sure. And the second half isn't that bad either. Uh, nice intense turns and a corkscrew too, so... It might not be the longest being an invert, but it's definitely a great ride. Number 13 is this coaster. I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But anyways, it's in South Korea at the same park with Drake in the B&M dive. And it kind of looks like Raptor in Silver Bullet uh, smushed together. Uh, it does have the loop, zero zero cobra roll, kind of like Raptor. And I just don't think that that will be too intense. It will be pretty intense, but not as intense as some of the other rides in this list in the second half. Uh, we'll probably have some intensity with the corkscrews and stuff. But like I said, just not as intense as some of the other eyes on this list. Number 12 is the Raptor clones, which is Raptor and Monster at Wally Gator Park, which was relocated from Expo Land. But anyways, I just wasn't... I was just really uh, underwhelmed with these rides. Uh, they just looked... They just look... They were very... Uh, just math, like, they were intense. The second half uh, was very intense, but I, I just think, I just thought it was going to be more intense. Uh, it might run better, like, especially with the mid-course off, but the second half uh, was just uh, pretty good, and the first half really just wasn't as intense as I was expecting, and there's definitely more intense rides, so that's why they're coming at the number 12 spot. Number 11 is Talon. I am going to be riding this this year probably, but... Uh, it's very similar to Patriot, but it's just a lot more compact. It's a bit shorter in height, so and it's just a lot more compact and great pacing, uh, really good whip, and just has these like really low to the ground turns that look very intense too, which is very kind of strange for being a invert. At least I haven't seen a lot of them, so uh, I think that's going to be cool. And it's definitely just a small, fast-paced ride, and that's why uh, I like it. Or I think it's going to be good. So, anyways, number 10 is Black Mamba. And this is kind of similar to Talon as it focuses on the great pacing and just the shorter uh, compact ride flying around. And it has the Fantasia Land awesome setting with uh, the all the rock work and 
near misses and stuff like that. But it just looks like it's going to have some nice compact, uh, really uh, intense and whippy moments. So that's why it's uh, on number 10 spot. So anyways, number 9 is the Batman clones. And I don't care that these are clones. They're still great rides. They're cloned for a reason. And that's because they're good. And also because it's Six Flags. But they're cloned to other parks anyways. So uh, anyways, I was just very uh, surprised when I rode uh, one of these for the first time. The first half, the vertical loops are some of the most intense moments I've ever experienced, and the ending corkscrews are some of the most whippy moments I've ever experienced. They really try to rip your feet off, so that's why I like these so much. I don't really care that they're clones. They're just great, compact rides, and that's why they're coming at the number nine spot. Number eight is Flight Deck, and this is pretty much, uh, you take Batman the Ride, and Batman the Ride, and Batman the Ride, and all them, but uh, you also just add a Helix at the end. Uh, that's really intense, like definitely one of the best finales on a coaster uh, with the course from the Helix. And the uh, beginning of the ride is pretty good too, so that's why it's going to be ahead of it. Number seven is Nemesis, very similar to Black Mamba with the near misses and terrain and stuff. And like uh, most of the previous b &M inverts, it's just very small and compact. So it's going to have some really tight elements that are very intense and whippy. So number six is Alpengeist. I'm riding this this year and I'm super excited, but... Uh, it does look a bit more drawn out. It's actually almost a hyper coaster. It's taller than the uh, apparently the hyper coaster in the park, which isn't even a hyper coaster because it's only 170 feet. So Apollo's Chariot's not a hyper, but that's a conversation for later. But uh, Alpengeist, uh, just some of the beginning moments look very drawn out, uh, but like they look intense too. Like I think there's going to be very sustained positives, and the second half has an awesome zero g roll and corkscrew to make this ride great. So that's why. Alpengeist looks like a great ride. Number five is Banshee. I've ridden this. Very similar to Alpengeist with the big, sustained, intense moments, especially the pretzel knot. But the uh, other moments, like the zero-g roll and the inline twist, uh, just provide hang time because it's a newer b &M invert, so it's not going to be the uh, most whippy out there. But it does have some nice, weird hang time, and it's a very long ride. It's for track length. It's track length. It's the longest b &M invert, so it was definitely a long ride, and that's why... I like it. So, number four is Afterburn. Uh, this has the Batwing, which automatically makes any ride good. And that's why it's good. But uh, it also has some other great moments, too. Uh, it just kind of looks like it combines the... Uh, it's it's a bit larger, so it combines, like, the uh, sustained intensity and just the whip all around, too. So, that's why Afterburn is going to be very high on this list. Number three is Pyrenees. And this is pretty much like a Batman clone and steroids. The first half is very similar to Batman clone, but the stretch is much larger, so it's much more sustained. And the second half has uh, some really tight helixes and corkscrews that look very intense and whippy as well. Number two is Gatoon, and basically, if you make Banshee an old school BNM invert, this is what you get. So you get all the sustained intensity, but you also get uh, the whip instead of the hang time on the zero-g roll and the two ending corkscrews. So that's why this ride is going to be the number two and one of the best BNM inverts, but not the best as, in my opinion, even though I haven't ridden it, Montu is the best BNM invert out there. It has a bat wing, which makes it super intense. I've heard it's one of the most intense moments, and it's a very long duration ride. The duration is very long, and it has a lot of whippy moments, very intense moments in the first half. It's uh, pretty large, so it's going to have some nice intense moments, and it just really does everything I like with these B&M inverts, like I've said a million times uh, on this list. You know, the positives and the whip is why these B&M inverts are so awesome, and no none of them do it better than Montu, in my opinion. So, anyways, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Comment below, what are your favorite B&M inverts? If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.